Our dinosaur of the day is Dilophosaurus, and Dilophosaurus' name comes from the two crests that were on top of its head. It had these pair crests that were very distinctive, but it's not clear what the crests were used for. They may have been to attract females or help packs recognize each other, that is if Dilophosaurus traveled in packs. One thing scientists can agree on, though, is that these crests were probably too delicate for anything but display purposes. Dilophosaurus lived in the early Jurassic about 200 to 190 million years ago, and it is famous from the Jurassic Park movie. If you remember the part, I don't remember the real the actor's name, but the guy who plays Newman. <laughs> so he, when he gets to the Jeep and there's the little spitting cobra-style dinosaur in there with the frill and everything so they depict it as being venomous and having that frill but in real life there's no evidence that it was poisonous and there's also no evidence of it having a frill or spitting anything and interestingly there's no evidence of any dinosaurs having venom or frills so michael crichton was said to have taken some creative license when creating that dinosaur but it was quite a bit of creative license because in the movie it was about the size of a dog, uh, if you remember it was sitting in the passenger seat. But in real life it was about 20 feet long and weighed over a thousand pounds, so there's no way it would have fit in the Jeep, <laughs> especially with someone else in the car. Dilophosaurus looked very similar to most theropods, most meat eaters in the Jurassic in North America, except for its head crest, so it's kind of interesting that it was portrayed the way it was in Jurassic Park. One explanation, according to the Jurassic Park wiki, is that the inclusion of the frog DNA, or a splicing error, may have given it its abnormal traits. So that's their way of trying to explain this extra venom and frill. Dilophosaurus has a kind of interesting history. It was originally grouped as a megalosaur, which is considered the waste basket taxon for theropods. It was first discovered in 1942 in Arizona, and eventually, though, it became its own genus because of its crest. Some scientists say Dilophosaurus is a ceratosaur, while others say it's a cellophysis. So, in 1942, Sam Wells, a paleontologist, went to Arizona to confirm a dinosaur finding he had heard about from 1940. And he said that there were three dinosaurs, about 20 feet apart, but one was almost completely eroded, so they couldn't really learn anything from it. The skeletons were all collected in 10 days during a rush job, and they brought them to Berkeley. It took more than 12 years to clean the bones, and then eventually Dilophosaurus was first named Megalosaurus wetherelli. But Sam Wells wanted Dilophosaurus to be more than just a wastebasket dinosaur, understandably, so he went back to Arizona in 1964, and he found a fossil with a double crest on the top of its skull, so he named this new genus Dilophosaurus wetherelli in 1970. There's also another Dilophosaurus species, Dilophosaurus sinensis, which was discovered by Chinese paleontologists in the Yunnan province in 1987. Some scientists think it's a different dinosaur called Crylophosaurus, which means the cold-crested lizard, which is a species that was found in Antarctica in the early 1990s. Sam Wells also named a third Dilophosaurus species called Dilophosaurus bridorium, but he did not publish about it. Dilophosaurus was a primitive predator, so it didn't have forward-facing eyes or stereo vision. We talked about stereo vision earlier and how if you're a hunter you want to be able to distinguish how far away an animal is whereas if you're prey you're like a sheep and you just want to be able to see as many angles so nothing can sneak up on you so this is kind of an unusual one because it was definitely in the hunting group but it hadn't evolved stereo vision yet so must have been interesting <laughs> I think it's especially interesting you combine that with the fact that it could run fast up to possibly 30 miles an hour, but it didn't have depth perception. <laughs> not really sure how well that would work running through a forest without depth perception at a high rate of speed, but anyway, it seemed to work well for it for a few million years. It probably used scent to hunt. That might be based on the fact that it couldn't see that well, but it also had a good nose on it. It had a dew claw, which is that type of claw we talked about with Deinonychus, 
sticking on the back of its foot, and it had hollow bones with an S-shaped curved neck. And every time I hear that, I think of the ostrich again. But, <laughs> you know, I guess maybe the ostriches are just one of many dinosaurs rather than being everything being like an ostrich. Dilophosaurus also had a long tail that could be used as a whip in a fight, and it may have hunted in packs. Scientists infer this from the group of three that they found in Arizona and footprints they found of groups. So they had long, slender, rear-curving teeth, long jaws, and strong arms to grab prey. And the teeth were also needle-like and could puncture, which means that they may have eaten fish. But Dilophosaurus may have also scavenged for food. It had a crocodile-like appearance with a notch behind the first row of teeth and it had weakly rooted teeth in the back of its upper jaw, so it probably wasn't strong enough to hunt large prey. Again, maybe this helps the argument that it ate fish. It's unclear if it had feathers, but it was very bird-like. Based on some fossilized footprints, scientists think Dilophosaurus probably sat like a classic birds in an upright clapping position, with the palms facing each other in an upright position. If you'd like to see the Dilophosaurus skeletons, it's kind of tricky because they're not currently on display anywhere. They're housed at the University of California Berkeley Museum of Paleontology, but it's not open to the public except for one day a year, which is April 18th this year, 2015, and it's a day known as Cal Day because the school is called Cal for short. And Sabrina and I are probably going to go this year, see if we can see some of these skeletons that are hiding away in their museum. As we mentioned, Dilophosaurus is in the family Dilophosauridae, and they lived all over the world. It's easy to live all over the world in the late Triassic and early Jurassic period because the continents hadn't separated much by that point, and they were some of the early carnivorous dinosaurs. Within the family, they were about 13 to 23 feet long, and weighed between 660 and 1,100 pounds. As Sabrina mentioned, they are named after their head crests, and that was probably used for attracting mates or scaring off rivals. Dilophosauridae did have that notch between their teeth, which made them look like crocodiles, but unlike crocodiles, they probably had pretty weak bites, so they were more likely to be scavengers than they were to be hunters which I guess if you don't have stereo vision, it's pretty hard to be a hunter, so that kind of makes sense. Dilophosauridae tracks have been found in Utah, and they could probably swim, and being that they could probably swim, they probably also ate fish from time to time. Alan Cherig and Andrew Milner named the Dilophosauridae family in 1990, and at the time it only had the type genus Dilophosaurus. But now there's other species in that family, including Zupasaurus, Dracovinator, and Cynosaurus, as well as Cryolophosaurus. However, not all scientists think that Cryolophosaurus and Cynosaurus should be in the group, even though they are medium-sized theropods with crests on their heads. Dilophosauridae is part of the superfamily Coelophysodiae, but Dilophosaurids might be closer to the Tannerae group, which has advanced megalosaurs, carnosaurs, and coelosaurs. Because Dilophosauridae was around in the late Triassic through early Jurassic, they may have been the oldest tetanurin theropods, which have stiff tails and evolved into modern birds. Yeah, so in a really neat way, they may have been the earliest great-great-great-great-grandparent <laughs> that we know of that's uh you know related to modern avian birds and it's funny on the wikipedia page when you look at the tetanuran group it shows a dilophosaurid next to a toucan <laughs> which is a funny comparison and you can see some of the similarities as well as a lot of differences